I'll be the first to say I might not have picked a great outfit. Jangly, jangly things. Hello, welcome back to my channel. If you do not know, my name is Lucy Moon. And today we are talking about something that has been about a year in the making, but I didn't want to make the video too early on because it's been a process. Oh, today I'm drinking green tea. So today let's talk about why and how I'm gluten free. So if you don't know, I am gluten intolerant. Nice to meet you. I don't know how long I've been gluten intolerant for. I also don't know if I'm celiac. I've been tested before twice now, but you have to eat gluten for six weeks, six beautiful weeks. And actually if I do that, I'm not sure what will happen to my body. I've managed two before. So I don't think I'm ever going to get a definitive answer, which is kind of frustrating, but like, what can you do? Let's wind back to the beginning. So I have a whole blog post all about being gluten free where I'd written down everything and all my thoughts and like my journey and whatever. I might still publish it just so I've got it in kind of written form as well as in video form. Let's start with a little bit of family history. When I was growing up, one by one, my aunts on my dad's side all went gluten free. They said they had, you know, really bad like digestion issues and bowel issues due to gluten. I was like, God, I'm so lucky I've avoided the family curse. This is wonderful. However, cut to December 2017. It's Christmas. I am feeling like actual poo on a stick. I feel dreadful. And I just didn't know why. Like I was like, all of me just didn't seem to be working in my digestion area, but specifically at the end of my digestion, if you know what I mean. I thought, well, let's do a process of elimination. It's probably dietary. So the first thing I should try because of all of my family is going off gluten. So as of January the 1st, I quit gluten. And within three weeks, pretty much every symptom had completely alleviated or alleviated to a great extent, I should say. Not completely gone, but not affecting my life in the same way anymore. It was very bittersweet because part of me was thrilled I'd worked out that there was a solution, but part of me was really sad about what was causing the problem. So ever since then, bar two weeks where I was getting celiac tested, I have been gluten free. Let me tell you a bit about my personal symptoms. Actually, let me define what being gluten intolerant and being celiac is, because they are two different things. First of all, gluten. Gluten is wheat, oats, barley, and rye. Oats because they're processed around a lot of wheat. Oats themselves are absolutely fine, but wheat, barley, and rye. If you are gluten intolerant or celiac, if you eat any of those foods, you will have a digestive reaction. And I say digestive, but really I mean literally whole body. People break out in rashes, people get headaches, people have all sorts of stuff happen. And if you're celiac and you continue to eat gluten, you're likely to get all sorts of things like really severe issues like osteoporosis. You're also more likely to have a thyroid problem. There's like a whole bunch of research into it. The average person can digest gluten absolutely fine. There is no issue there. So I am an anomaly in that. However, there are a lot of people who are allergic and intolerant to gluten, often Caucasian people, but obviously it extends further than that. As my doctor just told me, I really hit that sweet, sweet spot for being gluten intolerant, which is annoying. So let's talk about my symptoms. I don't wanna go into too much detail. So being gluten intolerant or celiac means you can't digest those foods very well, or you can't digest them at all, and you just reject them completely. I'm sitting somewhere in the middle of that. Like I have quite a strong reaction, but I don't vomit or anything like that. So the big thing that I realized when I went gluten free back in January of 2018, was that a lot of things that I thought were just how people lived their life were actually a reaction I was constantly having to the gluten in my diet. So that includes constant acid reflux, burping, constant wind, uh, really bad bloating, really bad stomach cramps, uh, various weird like kind of passing of stool that I don't really want to divulge into, sore hips and back, no energy or focus, very lethargic. That's a really big one for me. So. I didn't realize that a lot of my lethargy, is that what you say? A lot of my complete brain melting zone outs after lunch and after dinner were all actually due to gluten. <laughs> they completely vanished after about two or three months of being gluten free, which was terrifying. I don't know how I did my degree. When you realize something's having that kind of an impact on you day to day, it is so, so scary. Also, it's worth mentioning as well, the first thing to go that I just couldn't eat or drink anymore was beer after I went sober, so I went sober in October 2016 for three or four months. After that point onwards, no beer. Beer just severely upset my stomach. I just thought, oh, I just react to beer. I don't know why. I should have caught on at that point, I think, but yet I continue to eat wheat and all the other things involved in gluten. Also to add to that, I get some level of skin problems. I get acne, my eczema breaks out. Like there's just so much and I'd never attributed any of it to gluten, like why would you? And then as soon as I came off the gluten, 
it just all cleared itself up very gradually. Some things really instant actually, and some things a little bit slower. And half those things I only noticed like what a month or two down the line when I realized I wasn't procrastinating after lunch anymore and I literally had no desire to either. I was like, wow, <laughs> what has happened? I've now been gluten free for that long. I found it very, very hard at first, I won't lie. It's a very restrictive diet. This is part of the reason why I'm reluctant to take on any other dietary restrictions because it's a real like, you really realize when you have to start eating it again for the celiac test, you really realize how much you've had to cut out. It means on a realistic level, I can't eat bread. I can't eat pasta. I can't eat obviously rye bread. I can't eat couscous. I can't eat bulgur wheat. I can't eat, I can't eat anything with soy sauce in it. I can't eat noodles unless they're rice noodles. And even then they can't be in a soy sauce based broth. And then obviously on top of that, no cake, no pastries, no donuts, all your sweet food, no cereals. It's a very restrictive diet, especially if you're on the go a lot or you need to get out somewhere or you live in a very small place where there's not that much variety of stuff. I remember about a month in, I think I was in an M&S or I was in Waitrose or something. I just wanted to grab like a quick, what well, equivalent of a sandwich to just go to a meeting with and I couldn't find anything that was gluten free at all. And I just had a cry. <laughs> it just takes it out of you like mentally having to be so constantly aware and constantly restrictive and not out of your own choice as well. And you know how some people say with meat that when they went vegetarian, they had to start changing the way they thought about how they arranged food because the first thing they thought of was the meat they were gonna eat and then they built the meal around it. I was that, but with grains. I'd be like, what grain am I gonna eat? And then build the meal around that and that just, or like what, what carb? And I obviously had to completely rethink that attitude when I went gluten free because Half of the normal carbohydrates I used to have are just cut off from me. The things I can eat carbohydrate wise are rice and potatoes and then gluten free substitutes. And weirdly, I can also eat sourdough bread, like proper sourdough, not bad sourdough, like cheap sourdough. Mm -mm. If it's made like properly with a starter dough, I can eat that. There's some kind of phenomenon with people who are gluten intolerant and sourdough. So it's not the end of the world. I can still eat carbs. It's just a very limited selection of carbs and I have to be incredibly forward thinking and aware all the time, reading packages all the time. I pick up random things like that I never think gluten was in a million years. I nearly had um, one of those fizzy straws, like strawberry, like a strawberry lace, and the strawberry lace had wheat in it, and I nearly ate it. But overall, as time went, but overall as time has gone by, I've become so much more used to it. Like I don't even really miss a lot of foods anymore or think about them. It's just become a natural part of my day to day. And you know what's actually really helped a lot is finding really good substitutes for stuff. I know what my favorite pita breads are. I know my favorite fake breads. I know my favorite sourdough. I know where I can find a mac and cheese when I need it. Like once you have those options and you have freezer food all ready for yourself and stuff, it kind of, and like, you know which ready meals you can have. And then Pizza Express recently brought out um, a gluten-free pizza that you can just bung in the oven. Those kind of fast foods, once you know where they are and what restaurants cater to you, your whole life becomes a lot easier. I think I should probably continue by just saying like, it's not over yet, annoyingly. I was hoping that giving up gluten would completely clear up my dietary issues. Over the past couple of months, I've noticed some things returning and some things getting worse as opposed to better. So I'm back in the doctors for a bunch more tests, trying to work out what I'm intolerant to. I seem to have a lot of reactions to a lot of fruit and veg that's raw. I don't know why. I seem to be having a lot of skin reactions to stuff. I'm not sure what's going on. So I'm currently having a bunch of tests for all of that stuff to try and work out what's up. I probably won't find out, you know? And I think that's maybe the most frustrating part is like your body is so complicated, which is a beautiful thing but it really limits how much you can actually really find out about it. So I'm kind of living in this like limbo world where I think I know what's wrong and I definitely know how to manage a lot of what's wrong, but I want to come to the root cause and I just don't know what the root cause is at the moment. I'll probably never know, but I do have a whole life to try and find out. So I'll keep doing that. Ultimately, I might just need to be low FODMAP, which would suck. There's not really that much more to add at the moment. I feel like that's kind of the first part of my gluten story. If you think you're gluten intolerant, I think the best thing you can do, first of all, is before you quit gluten, go and get a celiac test because you can't really reintroduce it that easily if you are gluten intolerant or celiac and then you want to get diagnosed later on in time. It doesn't really work, which is really sad. And until we have better ways of finding out if we are whatever we are intolerant and allergic to, that's just the case. And so I really wish that when I'd been worried back in December, I'd just gone and got a test while I was still like stocked up full of Christmas food and crazy like goose fat flour wrapped roast potatoes and whatever else I was eating. I'll leave the blog post down there and I think I'm gonna put a bunch of my like favorite gluten-free discoveries and recommendations for kind of faster food and restaurants 
all in there. Because I think it's important to share the knowledge because it does get easier when you know these things and you kind of have your like, your kind of little black book of what you have and where you can find it. It does become just so much easier. Anyway, thank you so much for watching this video. I hope it's been interesting. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and check out the blog post and have a look at my blog in general because I love my blog. And I hope you're all having a wonderful January and I will see you in two days for another video.